Now let's discuss the nerve supply of the stomach. So we all know that the stomach is a viscera and we all know that viscera are supplied by autonomic nerves because they're derived from splanchnopleuric mesoderm. Just like every autonomic nerve supply, the stomach also has a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nerve supply. The sympathetic nerve supply of the stomach is derived from the T6 to T9 segments of the spinal cord via the greater splanchnic nerves that we studied in the thoracic sympathetic trunk and from the esophageal and hepatic plexuses. All right, that's where it's derived from. Whereas the parasympathetic supply is derived from the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is divided into fibers because vagal fibers come via the gastric nerves. So what happens is the gastric nerves are divided into an anterior and a posterior gastric nerve. Here I want you to focus and remember this part very well. Uh, the mnemonic goes like lag and RIP or RIP. All right. So remember one thing. The anterior gastric nerve has the left vagal fibers, whereas the posterior gastric nerve has the right vagal fibers. I hope that makes sense and you remember that very well. So anterior gastric nerve, anterior to the stomach, posterior uh, gastric nerve, posterior to the stomach, anterior carries the left, whereas the posterior carries the right vagal fibers, right? Let's talk about the function of the sympathetic system. What happens when sympathetic stimulation is activated on the stomach? How does the sympathetic nerve stimulation affect the stomach? Never forget this, that it is vasomotor, which means it constricts the blood vessels. And the second effect of sympathetic nerve stimulation on the stomach is that it is a motor to the sphincters. That means it closes the sphincters. Which sphincter more specifically is the pyloric sphincter. Whereas to the rest of the gastric muscles, this is inhibitory. It has an inhibitory effect to the rest of the gastric musculature of the stomach, which means, which means that it prevents contracting of the stomach or like passage of the food forward. Uh, it inhibits that. And finally, uh, the third function is that it gives pathway for pain sensation. All right, the amount of pain you feel in the stomach is usually felt by the sympathetic stimulation as a result of it. And then you have the vagus stimulation. The vagus stimulation is the opposite of all of this. The vagal stimulation has a stimulatory effect on the uh, gastric musculature, which means it causes peristalsis, the parasympathetic system. It causes the movement of food uh, ahead. So it has that stimulatory function. And the second important function is that it is secretomotor, which means it increases the secretions in the stomach, which means parasympathetic system is when your stomach is the most active, that it is secreting and digesting food and uh, peristalsizing the food forward, right? So that is a function of the parasympathetic, whereas sympathetic has more of an inhibitory function. And here I pause the video to explain to you that the sympathetic system is actually the fight and flight system and that is why it has an inhibitory effect on the digestive tract because other parts of the body are prioritized during fight and flight mode whereas the parasympathetic system when activated is when your digestive tract is more active. And finally never forget that the lesser curvature is where mostly the peptic ulcers occur in the stomach and then the greater curvature is where the is the common site for gastric carcinoma. So that was all you needed to know about the stomach. I really hope that my lectures helped you. We'll move forward to the small intestine in the next videos. So tune in and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching.